examples. I'm asserting my, my role to help you. I want to help you. You can't. The rules don't allow you to do that. But it's here. That order, that is one of your rules. But on the point of order, rules how you can raise the point of order. It's not allowed. How? Read. Read your rules. They won't Mr. allow. Speaker, that you, is one of if, your rules. If that you allowed me to speak. May you take it your seat, will, Honorable Member? You. Take your seat. Yes. It's not allowed. So your point of order is not admitted. Honorable Member for Kafin Salis, proceed. Mr. Speaker, this is what you are causing a problem now in the House. Point of order, don't say no. Don't say no. You are causing a problem in the House. Honorable Member for Kafin For as long as you are only going to allow those to speak, there is going to be a problem here. Honorable we are ready to be punished, uh -huh. Mr. Speaker. Honorable we will not continue with this mediocre. Sergeant We will not continue with this mediocre. Terms. For as long as you only allow them to speak, S my members cannot speak. No, we can't allow this. This is a house of order. of order. I am ready to face the consequences on behalf of my member. Uh -huh. I okay. cannot continue. Watch the entire video, my lovely viewers. I mean from start to finish to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mutati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Honorable, you're welcome to the platform. Good evening. Good evening to you, Chilufia. I'm happy to be here this evening. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Mm. Let us start by talking about how you are coping with your suspension. 30 days suspended from Parliament. How is that going for you? Very well. Um, I'm coping very well. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, um, I continue to, to do my work in the background. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly in touch with the Honourable Members of Parliament. We are strategizing together on parliamentary business. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, we always find time in the evenings to meet and uh, uh, you know, talk about uh, uh, matters before the floor of the house. Mm -hmm. All right, let us talk about what led to your suspension from parliament for 30 days. Uh, we hear that you were suspended for breach of parliamentary privilege and contempt of the house. Tell us about that. Yes, the brief background is... Uh, there was an incident in October last year mm -hmm. uh, when uh, uh, members of uh, parliament from the opposition uh, started complaining. They sent me notes. Some came to where I was sitting to complain that um, the presiding officer was uh, not impartial mm -hmm. in the manner that they were conducting business. Mm -hmm. And that led to some disquiet uh, on the floor of the house, especially that members on the right mm -hmm. they were being given opportunities to speak. And they were raising points of order outside the established rules mm -hmm. and allowed to deliver. And when members from the left tried to do the same, they were curtailed. Now, uh, using Standing Order 44, uh, that refers to the roles of the leader of opposition, mm -hmm. I wanted to guide the House and assist the Speaker. So when I raised a point of order, he curtailed me. He wouldn't allow me to even finish with my point of order. I respectfully pleaded with him that um, what I was doing was my job, you know, as uh, established in the rules, and that he could allow me to just finish, uh, mm -hmm. you know, asking my question or uh, raising my point of order. So he rudely uh, curtailed me and went to the next speaker. Uh, I tried to appeal, uh, you know, because I, I sat very close to him. Uh, he wouldn't listen. And that obviously, that uh, infuriated me. And uh, I stood up to address the house. Mm -hmm. And basically, I was communicating in anger that um, for as long as he only allowed one side of the house to speak, and did not accord similar uh, opportunities to the other side of the house, there would be a problem. Mm -hmm. I informed the presiding officer on the floor of the house that for the sake of parliamentary democracy, mm -hmm. I was 
ready to face the consequences. If at all what I was doing then was in breach of the rules, but it was important that I communicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, of course, um, in, in, in summary, that's what led to, to the suspension. Right. Would you have a clip of what led to Honorable Mundurile's uh, suspension from Pali? Let's take a look. I'm asserting my, my role to help you. I want to help you. You can't. The rules don't allow you to do that. But you see, that order, that is one of your rules, but on the point of order, rules, how you can raise the point of order, it's not allowed. How? Read. Read your rules. Speaker, that is one of if, your roles. If that you allowed me to speak, may you take your seat, Honorable Member? You. Take your seat. Yes. It's not allowed. So your point of order is not admitted. Honorable Member for Kafinsa, let's proceed. Mr. Speaker, this is what you are causing a problem now in the house. Why don't, no, 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 don't say no? Don't say no. You are causing a problem in the house. Honorable Member for Kafinsa. Well, as long as you are only going to allow those to speak, there's going to be a problem here. Honorable we are ready to be punished, uh-huh. Mr. Speaker. Honorable we will not continue with this mediocre. Attempt. We will not continue Sergeant with this mediocre. For as long as you only allow them to speak, Sergeant. their members cannot speak. No, we can't allow this. This is a house of order. of order. I am ready to face the consequences on behalf of my members. Uh-huh. I okay. cannot continue. Sergeant Atams. Sergeant Atams. Ensure that the leader of opposition is out of the house. Sergeant Adams, do your job. Ensure that he's out. All right, and that is what led to the suspension of the leader of opposition in Parliament. Um, Honourable, one question, of course, arises as to why the suspension now when this happened in October last year. As you could clearly see from the clip, Mm -hmm. the presiding officer was wrong. So they took time because Parliament realised that as a matter of fact, my rights and privileges in the house were abused. That anger was as a result of the speaker denying me an opportunity to speak. As a leader in the house, mm-hmm. leader of opposition, with over 60 members behind me, mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be accorded the respect that I deserved. You would notice that um, the other microphones in parliament Turn green when you press, mm-hmm. and two years, the the presiding officer gives an opportunity, an opportunity. Then it turns red, and it, you are ready to speak. The one for a little opposition it turns red immediately, because the parliamentary system is such that uh, you are a shadow prime minister. In other jurisdictions where they respect and understand parliamentary systems, mm-hmm. a leader of opposition is even given a special slot to deliver statements on the floor of the house on matters uh, of importance to the nation. So it's not a mere position. You're not a mere member of parliament. Mm-hmm. You're actually there as a presiding officer. So what is supposed to happen is that um, the speaker's uh, government chief whip, 
lead of opposition, uh, opposition whips are actually on one side. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when there is um, uh, a situation on the floor of the House, the Speaker actually appeals to the leaders in the House, being a government chief whip, leader of opposition, and the other whips, to take care of the situation. Mm -hmm. So when the leader of opposition uh, rises to his feet and appeals to the presiding officer that he wants to help, that should be a welcome idea by the presiding officer because he's actually helping the House. So uh, the unfortunate, the misfortune is that um, uh, we have presiding officers who may not comprehensively understand the parliamentary system. Mm. Uh, they feel by virtue of being in opposition, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, I'm an enemy to the system. Mm -hmm. So if he had given me an opportunity, I was actually going to help him. Mm -hmm. well, we hear the speaker say that you are not following the rules. Maybe you might want to tell us what um, Standing Order 44 says. Well, uh, Standing Order 44 uh, basically uh, outlines the role of leader of opposition mm -hmm. that uh, you shall assist the speaker in telling decorum in the house. Mm -hmm. And that is what I was relying on. Mm -hmm. uh, I realized that um, there were some disturbances and some disquiet on the floor of the house. Mm -hmm. So I stood up, you know, as leader of opposition to try and assist the speaker. I was actually assisting the speaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could watch from the clip how I was uh, rudely interrupted, uh, ignored, and you went ahead to, uh, uh, to point the next speaker. Obviously, uh, as a person that has been in the house for eight years now, uh, in the previous government, uh, I did not only serve as a minister, but I also served as a government chief whip. Mm -hmm. um, Confessant, I understood the rules clearly. Uh, Comrade Jack Mwembu was once a uh, leader of opposition. I uh, remember that uh, Speaker Matibini would give him an opportunity to address the House if mm -hmm. he rose on a very serious matter. Now, if you have a House where they don't even allow you as a leader to finish raising your point of order, mm -hmm. yeah, because... Uh, the ruling from the speaker should have come after I had raised my point of order. Even when I said, I want to help you, I was hoping that I would persuade him just to exercise patience and wait for me to deliver my point of order. Mm. And he completely ignored me. Right. Yes. Something that um, you as uh, the opposition in parliament have really complained about is um, the, the conduct of the speaker, Madam Nelly Moti, and the deputy. Maybe just tell us how you, as as, as opposition, make of uh, the conduct of the speakers in the National Assembly. Well, first of all, um, what happens is that um, certain decisions are made. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the environment in Parliament gets heated up sometimes, as mm -hmm. expected. Uh, presiding officers are human beings. Mm -hmm. We expect that, uh, especially when they are new, they would make mistakes. Right. And uh, our standing orders provide for how you challenge decisions of presiding officers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you, you do it through uh, a written uh, complaint or a motion. And uh, what we did, uh, where we're coming from, in the beginning we would actually meet in the Speaker's office on several occasions. We will raise these issues you know, on how we are going to work together and the presiding officers and ourselves as people that are aiding or supporting or helping presiding officers. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we, 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 we raise with that um, they should look at us as allies. When the, the presiding officer, for instance, feels that uh, one of my members, let's say Munia Zulu, is misconducting himself, mm -hmm. uh, all the speaker has to do is to call upon the whips to maintain order. I walk up to Munia without naming the member. Mm -hmm. Remember, when the, when the member's name is mentioned, that already elicits anger. It's embarrassing because it's before the whole country. These are honorable members of parliament mm -hmm. who were voted for by the people. They need to be accorded the respect. So when the speaker says, uh, whips maintain order in the house, you see whips going to sit with the members and sometimes asking you know the members to maybe step out with them for a chat 
whilst parliamentary business continues. In this parliament, strangely, you find that presiding officers actually descend all the time to the level of members of parliament and begin to engage members of parliament directly. When it comes to discipline, the whips are there to maintain discipline. The speaker just guides the whips. Government chief whip, can you ensure that we have order in the house? Mm -hmm. The government uh, chief whip, as the overall uh, uh, boss for the, for the whips, could send a note across the floor uh, to the leader, leader of opposition or uh, the opposition whip. Hey, comrade, uh, what's happening on your side? Can you make sure that uh, Honorable so-and-so maybe goes outside to or can you... In the meantime, the business of the house continues. Mm -hmm. So that way, you don't waste a lot of time in discussing disciplinary matters, calling out members on the floor. That is how parliament is run. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at uh, the current parliament, for instance, I don't think you even know the names of the whips. <laughs> I don't even know who the whips are. It's rare that the presiding officers are using, are making use of uh, uh, the whips. So we actually are spending a lot of time by presiding officers engaging members directly. It's not supposed to be like that. A functional house is actually run by the whips. Mm -hmm. Presiding officers are there as umpires, referees, just to regulate debate. So what you have now you have presiding officers speaking all the time. They speak more than the elected members of parliament. Mm. That is a, a, a house for uh, members, it's a house for the people. So you expect members of parliament to speak more than presiding officers. Unfortunately, what, what, what happens is uh, the exact opposite. Yeah. I, I, I may just give a quick example. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, let's say a member of parliament is given eight minutes to debate. And uh, in between, uh, he wants to give some examples, he wants to give some background. You see presiding officers interjecting and taking three minutes. The, 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 the watch is stopped, but the speaker has taken three minutes you know, in, in trying to guide the member. Right. So meaning that particular debate has taken 13, 14 minutes. That's a waste of time. When in other jurisdictions, we, we've been to other countries to learn, uh, you know, we call it benchmarking. We want to know how, you know, things are done in other jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, we went with one committee and a member from the UPND asked this question on the time. And so the Speaker of Morocco says, look, the people that come to this house are honorable members of parliament, mm -hmm. voted for by their people. If I give a member 10 minutes to speak, and he wants to waste that 10 minutes. It is 10 minutes. The ultimate judges uh, will not be me and my deputies. It will be the people that voted for that MP. They will judge him to, have, to be wasting time on the floor of the house. But if we interject, he will still get his 10, his 10 minutes in parts, but then he would have wasted time. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a point that is normally missed. Mm -hmm. Because presiding officers think you should debate according to how they feel. Mm. Uh, you know, I, we come from different backgrounds. Uh, Speaker Moyo and I come from different backgrounds. He does not expect me to debate or think the way he thinks on a particular subject. Right. He should therefore accord me an opportunity to deliver, uh, you know, in my style. Mm -hmm. He should, uh, because the people from Morocco are watching. The people of Zambia are watching. But if he thinks I should only deliver according to the way he thinks, that's the reason why we have problems. Right. You, you, you as an opposition feel that um, you're not given enough to uh, deliberate on issues in, in the August House. Why is it that you've gotten to a point where you feel that uh, there's dictatorial tendencies in Parliament? Well, I think uh, uh, the Zambian people watch Parliament TV. Even an ordinary person on the street today knows mm -hmm. something has gone wrong. You know, when members of parliament spend a lot of time in the library, mm -hmm. they spend a lot of time in their rooms researching and preparing for debate. Uh, previously, Chilufia, mm -hmm. we were given 20 minutes to debate. Uh, during the COVID period, uh, we had compressed it to uh, 10 minutes for ministers, a leader of opposition, and 8 minutes for, for the rest. Now, a proper debate, as you would want to know it, is a debate where 
you create from a foundation. You are speaking on behalf of your people. If I'm advising government, you know, I basically, through my debate, I want to hold them by their hand so they walk with me to appreciate what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Now, the eight minutes that has been given, uh, as has been contended by most of the members, is, is not enough. Uh, so sometimes uh, members of parliament compress their debate and they start their debate. Mm -hmm. The moment you disrupt a member, that is the reason why even when another member rises on a point of order, uh, out of courtesy, the first thing they would do is to apologize to the member who's on the floor mm -hmm. because you somehow disturb you know, the, the, their flow of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now, presiding officers deliberately curtail members, especially from the left, because if you have been watching Parliament, uh, something I'm proud of as leader of opposition mm -hmm. is that um, we've been able uh, to groom our members to deliver debate, uh, informed debate on the floor of the House. So presiding officers, uh, because they're influenced by the executive, are very uncomfortable with the debate that comes from the left. Uh, so in trying to disrupt the flow of thoughts, uh, they would all order, member, order, member. By the end of the day, the delivery from this particular member is affected. Mm. And that's most unfortunate. Sometimes it ends in anger, where he loses his thought, you know, because uh, he wants to deliver and he knows what he wants to talk about. But presiding officers would have allowed members on the right to speak freely to the end. And when it's time for the member on the, on the left, presiding officers will say, do you have evidence? The subject I'm talking about is in public domain. His headlines in the newspapers today. And then you're being asked to, do you have evidence of what you're saying? So all that is not necessary. Uh, you know, the, the, this positivism, the rules that they try to introduce are really affecting the quality of uh, uh, debate on the floor of the house. Mm -hmm. And the Zambian people, the taxpayers, uh, 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 are affected by, you know, the, 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 the conduct of the presiding officers uh, in the House. Right. Sometimes uh, the people feel that you as opposition are just unruly when, when, when trying to deliberate matters in Parliament. How does that make you feel? You see, the, parliament, the way Parliament works, there is also supposed to be some drama. Mm. It's supposed to be interesting. Mm. You, you, you know, we are not the first Parliament. Go back to uh, just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, pick the debate from Cornelius Mweto, Honorable Minister, Honorable Mwimbu, Honorable uh, Baron Combo, and the rest. They would dramatize. They would deliver. They would deliver their debate, uh, incorporating some drama, you know, uh, and so on. And the speaker allowed them to do that. That is how it's supposed to be done. So most of the times that um, the people feel. Uh, our members are being unruly is when they're reacting to the disturbances. Uh, you find that um, when a member on the right is debating mm -hmm. and there's a comment from across the floor, from the left, the speaker is quick to censure the members. Order, honorable member for Kapoche, uh, can you listen in silence? But when it's the opposite, okay, mm -hmm. when it's the opposite, members from the right would be calling members on the left, Masholi, Bakawalala, something unparliamentary, as the member is debating, and the speaker is quiet. These are things that happen every day. And uh, as I speak, uh, most of the people watching uh, by way of television actually know this, this actually happens. So that's the anger that you see, the frustration from the members. is because the lack of impartiality by presiding officers. Presiding officers needed to understand that um, parliament is independent has to be independent. Not only should it be independent, but be seen to be independent. Okay. We are there to provide checks and balances of the opposition. We are not praise singers. If I feel government has done something good, okay, I have a choice. I'll just keep quiet, not comment about it. So if we want government to work, we okay. go to the areas where we think there are weaknesses. And that's what we want to talk about. Now, that unsettles presiding officers. Uh, they feel we must be praise singers for. That's not being in opposition. Mm -hmm. If you call yourself uh, an opposition member of parliament, and every morning you want to say, we want to thank, why are you there? 
you know, the honorable thing to do is to cross the floor mm -hmm. and join, uh, join the, 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 the ruling party. Right. Let us bring in the case of uh, Honorable Imbano J. Banda, who's, uh, who was suspended for uh, more than 30 days uh, last, uh, last year to uh, last in around November into December. And we know that he's been suspended for another 30 days. Um, that just recently he was suspended from Parliament for 30 days. As leader of opposition, what is your role in such cases? How do you keep uh, the opposition members of Parliament in check? Well, first of all... Um you need to understand what led to Honorable J. J. Banda's suspension. Mm -hmm. When members from the opposition have raised issues on the floor of the House, mm -hmm. uh, coming from social media, Madam Nelly Muti has made it very categorical. Mm -hmm. Why do you believe things from social media when we can't even, if we put it to evidence, we don't even know the authenticity of those documents? Uh, I'm not ready to entertain uh, you know, documents or stories from social media. Mm -hmm. She has ruled on the floor of the house. Honorable J. Banda has been suspended because of a video clip from social media. I, I want you to see the injustices. Mm -hmm. That ruling has been there on the floor of the house. Speaker is not admitting uh, documents from social media. But in the case of J. Banda, the documents are admitted and he's suspended. So, when Jay Banda comes, wherever he is, of course he's around, he was in Tanzania, I was speaking to him last night, mm. he, he comes back as a person that um, is angry, is annoyed because of the injustice that was occasioned on him. Because the same presiding officers, denying evidence on social media, because it suits the executive, it suits the people on the right, they use the same evidence to punish Honorable J. Banda. Because going by the speaker's reasoning, uh, Mr. J. Banda, uh, somebody rose on a point of order that had made a comment on social media. The speaker should have declined to admit that evidence, as she has always done in other cases where the members of the opposition have raised issues. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it was convenient, and J. Banda has been punished. But the cases that uh, the issues that uh, Honorable J. Banda raised in that clip, Honorable, the, the, the speaker describes them. Uh, I mean, the uh, Honorable, uh, the Honorable and Aleki describes them as defamatory remarks, and uh, because they're bordering on the point of orders in the House, and also that members of Parliament were suspended because um, the, the, the Parliament wanted to start misusing funds. I agree with you. Before we go to the content, mm. it's a principle. Members of the opposition have had issues mm -hmm. to do with what a member on the right said on social media. So before even delving into the content, mm -hmm. Madam Speaker dismissed those, those, has dismissed those points of order, saying we don't want to get stories from social media we, because we can't even establish the authenticity of these stories. Mm -hmm. Why was it that in the case of JJ, she never rendered a similar ruling? Before even delving into what JJ said. Yes, that's where the issue is. The issue is not the content of the video clip, mm -hmm. but the principle of admitting the evidence from social media, which Madam Speaker had ruled before on the floor of the House, that she was not ready to get documents from social media and make a ruling upon them. That's where the issue is. Yeah, so um, as regards your question on um, my role uh, you know, as leader of opposition when mm -hmm. a member is suspended, of course there is nothing much uh, that we can do. We encourage each other in the background, and uh, I think my position remains the same. I, I tell the members, uh, when what, if what you did is right, mm -hmm. uh, walk with your head up high. Mm -hmm. uh, as is the case in my case, uh, I, 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 I told the committee that was um, interrogating my case that I had no apologies to make, right. and that if a similar situation arose in the future, I would do exactly what I did, mm -hmm. because uh, what I fight are injustices on the floor of the house. Who will not sit back uh, uh, and watch presiding officers uh, abrogate rules, the rules that we made for ourselves. Uh, it's important, Chilufia, to uh, note one thing. The presiding officer departs from the standing orders. Okay? 
because the standing order is there, standing order 44, for me to speak. The previous day, before my, my, my raising on the point of order, Honorable Chinkuli of Kanyama arose on the same point of order and was admitted by the speaker. The evidence is there. Mm -hmm. For me as a leader, you know, who's uh, being referred to in that same standing order, it doesn't allow me to even finish delivering the standing order. Now, that is an injustice. Previously, we would simply sit and engage the speaker in the background. We have written letters of complaint. Uh, we never get responses. Mm -hmm. We followed the rules in trying to address what we thought were omissions on the part of the speaker. And we followed the rules. And we never responded to. For how long? This is three years later. Should we continue doing the same? So I thought that time was very important for the Zambian people to know. And also for the sake of the members. Because the members were getting concerned to say our privileges our rights and privileges mm -hmm. are being abused on the floor of the house. And you, our leaders, are watching uh, the presiding officers uh, get away with it. So presiding officers abandon standing orders. So when I rise to remind uh, the speaker that um, you have departed, you have abandoned the standing orders, mm -hmm. uh, they want to go back to the standing orders to punish me. If you, as a presiding officer, abandon or depart from the standing orders. It means the standing orders are that large. If I misbehave, you can't go back to the same standing orders which you abandoned. I was simply trying to remind you to say go back to the standing orders. And uh, you quickly go back to the standing orders and say no, the manner of reminding me is not in accordance with the standing orders. When you were the first one to actually breach the same standing orders. I, I hope you understand the, 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 the mm -hmm. complication that we, we, we find ourselves in. Right. Yeah, so uh, myself, uh, as a leader on the, uh, in the House, I made one undertaking. I said, um, for as long as Parliament doesn't change, this is not the last punishment I'm serving. Right. Let us talk about the new standing orders, uh, Honourable, that made uh, members of both from the opposition and the ruling party walk out of Parliament. Yes, uh, standing orders, uh, Chilufia, are rules that we craft for ourselves. Mm -hmm on how we should govern ourselves in the house. And that derived, that power is derived from the constitution mm -hmm. and specifically article 77. So what happens is that um, in amending standing orders, um, submissions are invited from members of parliament on how they think a parliament can best be managed. Mm -hmm. So leaders of opposition, politi of, of, of political parties so, uh, who sit in the Standing Orders Committee, mm. sit together with other members to compile these submissions, uh, out of which a draft is assembled. Mm -hmm. Once the draft is assembled, it's issued out to the members, through the leaders, as I was part of the Standing Orders Committee. We got the drafts based on the submissions, and uh, our members reacted, uh, we compiled another document. What was expected was that uh, against the draft, we have further reactions from political parties and independents. We now sit in a workshop because as members of the PF, mm -hmm. we want to know uh, the clauses that we are common between right. us as political parties. They are non-contentious, which means these ones go through. Where are we having differences? We debate and persuade one another and then compress it in a document. In this particular case, this is a process that started two years ago. Mm -hmm. We have even done international trips to go and learn best practices. We went to Ghana, we went to Uganda, we went to Kenya, and they came up with um, uh, recommendations from these trips. What was suddenly was to see that all those lessons that we learned at great costs mm -hmm. did not find themselves in that document. Now remember, in those committees and benchmarking tours, mm -hmm. we have independent members of parliament, we have uh, opposition members of parliament and need the ruling party. So we all agreed, even informally, on what we think would be best for parliament. What came out of there 
uh, was just content that was uh, uh, picked from God knows where. Not what was being submitted. And you as members of parliament were not consulted. They called us for a workshop uh, to orient us that these are your new rules now. We say this is unusual. Mm -hmm. Firstly, we needed to understand from the draft stage what were the reactions from the political parties. Can we sit in a workshop and debate? Mm -hmm. Because we know the mischief that needed to be cured. We know that the past three years, the House has not been running smoothly. Mm -hmm. Can we deal with the contentious uh, issues so that we can begin to run the House in a proper manner? Nobody's consulted. Uh, they finalized the document. Remember, those rules are rules that members make for themselves. So somebody else goes, uh, sitting I don't know where, mm -hmm. uh, comes up with uh, uh, very strange rules that no parliament in this world can even contemplate on having. So members react, first of all, against the procedure. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the content. The standing orders, I've just forgotten the standing order, is very clear that um, when all the processes are done, the standing orders will be brought to the whole house for adoption. So two critical steps are skipped because the presiding officers are in a hurry mm -hmm. to bring up standing orders that uh, will be dictatorial. Standing orders that will turn parliament into a classroom where you have a headmistress, a prefect, a monitor, and people cannot just speak freely. Now we cannot... Uh, we, we cannot continue on that uh, trajectory. Mm -hmm. So members of parliament reacted. Uh, you know, literally just walking out. Nobody agrees with that. Because we want to uh, get on a table where we ask questions. Who submitted this particular clause? You know? And clearly members are saying, where are these things coming from? We know what is supposed to be in those standing orders. We know what has been problematic. Remember, these were merely amendments. Mm -hmm. There are some provisions which have not been uncontentious. They remain the same. So maybe if you ask me, from the old standing orders, we would have uh, contentions on four or five. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have, we are supposed to have new inclusions, fresh inclusions, so that we have a transformative parliament, a parliament that drives an agenda that would deliver to the aspirations of the Zambian people. And have these issues been addressed? Uh, not yet. We are, we, are, we, are, we are waiting to see. Mm -hmm. uh, but we understand our parliament today, uh, not very different from the UPND uh, governance style. They may come up arrogantly and just say these are the new standing orders. But, but how does it make you feel that for at least once you and uh, the, the ruling party members of parliament at least agree on one thing? It's not the first time, I want to tell you. Mm -hmm. We agree most of the times in the background. Now, because the UPND uh, runs a dictatorship style of government. I'll give you an example on my suspension. Mm -hmm. The vote was actually a no. Okay? The vote was actually a no. It's when they put it on a numerical vote. Members fearing for their adoptions and their continued membership in the party were forced to. But the actual vote was a no. Because members, both from the right and the left, knew that uh, I was unfairly treated on the floor of the House. They know that. That is why the reason w the, the, the vote went for a no. Mm -hmm. Now, these are friends. These are MPs. Some of them, we come from them from 2016. Uh, firstly, they are, they are saddened with the way Parliament is running, but they can't speak out. Remember that in UPND, you can't speak. You'll be punished for telling the truth. Yeah, so most of the MPs, even from the EPND, are dying inside. First of all, they're embarrassed to be part of uh, this parliament, uh, going by the way things are being done. Mm -hmm. But what can they say? What can they do? So to answer your question, Chief, it's not the first time that we are, maybe you're saying uh, it's the first time that we are agreeing openly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in most cases, uh, members are forced you know, to, to make decisions uh, by cohesion against their own principles and values. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Right, you're still watching the platform right here on Millennium TV. And thank you so much, our dear viewer, for staying tuned. And to those that are just joining us, this is the platform. And joining me on set this evening is Impro Koso, Member of Parliament and Leader of the Opposition in Parliament, Honorable Brian Mundurile. As we discuss the suspension of the Leader of Opposition, of course, uh, we do know that Honorable Mundurile was suspended from Parliament for 30 days. And he joins me on set to discuss that and more. Honorable, we move on that this evening before we wind up with our discussion. We talk about the debt restructuring, which is on everyone's lips. And of course, would love to hear what your position is as a leader of the opposition regards, um, regards the debt restructuring deal that was announced by government that is finally done and dusted. And we hear different sentiments from the opposition saying that this was an illegality. Well, um, the, the position on the debt restructuring... Uh, which is being uh, done um, by the consultants, uh, Lazard Frey, mm -hmm. started when PF was in power. Uh, you remember that uh, it was the PF government that actually contracted Lazard. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, continued with uh, the UPND. And uh, the announcements that we hear, uh, uh, is, this is not the first announcement that that restructuring had been done. Mm -hmm. uh, we A couple of months ago, uh, civil servants, head teachers, mistresses were lined up at the airport uh, to celebrate the arrival of the president from uh, France uh, because he had concluded uh, the debt restructuring. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the details came, we realized that um, it's either the president was not very familiar with the process, with the whole process, and uh, he resorted to premature celebrations, mm. or that uh, he was just out there to excite the Zambian people that he was doing something given that uh, everything uh, in the economy was falling apart. Yeah, so it's difficult to understand, you know, why, 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 why we, we had those celebrations. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, coming down the road, we discovered that um, the process was to verify. There were a number of agreements that had to be made. So even in this particular case, uh, of course, the president came and said, done and dusted, and, uh, you know, everybody's dancing. Uh, my take uh, after reviewing a few documents is that uh, yes there's been one step in, in, in forward in, in the right direction mm -hmm. given that uh, the discussions i think had almost collapsed sometime in november uh, it was reported in foreign news that um, there had been some sharp practice mm -hmm. by our government uh, you know uh, by accepting conditions that were different from uh, uh, other conditions given to other creditors. Mm -hmm. And yet under the IMF uh, G20 framework, there was a general agreement, uh, you know, to treat creditors uh, the same way. Mm. Uh, but our government, uh, the president and the finance minister, had gone ahead to agree with the bondholders to treat them differently, giving uh, different conditions, different from those that were recommended. Mm -hmm. So that uh, caused an uproar. And there was uh, some suspension, I think, in the uh, negotiations. There was some collapse in the negotiations. Mm -hmm. So where we are, uh, according to what uh, I'm reading, is that uh, that particular hurdle has been rectified. Uh, the creditors are now ready. Uh, the bondholders are ready mm -hmm. to start discussions and in line with the conditions that were given to other creditors. Yeah, so there's some, there, there, there's some positive outcome there. Uh, but it is wrong to say it's done and dusted. Mm -hmm. uh, because if it was done and dusted, what would they have been talking about? Would they have been looking at uh, actual documents that have been signed? When you read the text in the, in the press uh, statement that was released, mm -hmm. there are still documents to be exchanged. You know, there are still uh, legal instruments to be executed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the process is still ongoing. Uh, I just want to maybe caution, uh, and this I had done in person to the finance minister once, when he was coming to talk about debt restructuring mm -hmm. uh, on the floor of the house. I met him privately and I told him, I said, Minister, when you are delivering ministerial statements on important subjects such as this, you've got to be very careful and exercise caution. Don't excite Zambians unnecessarily. Explain in detail what restructuring means. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you will be misunderstood. The Zambians that are dying uh, of hunger out there, we will now believe 
that the promises that were made by the UPND will be implemented. Farmers will start celebrating that data has been restructured and now fertilizer will be 250. Mm -hmm. uh, the ordinary citizens will say, Manjo Unga, Uzankala cheaper than Iwa Igomiri, Uzankala 50 Kwacha. You know, and uh, so you need to explain first of what debt restructuring is and what would be the immediate impacts, mm -hmm. you know, to, to our economy. If you don't clarify that, you are going to cause problems for yourself. And I warned him, I said, I'm an opposition leader. If you go on the floor of the house and uh, begin politicking, I'll simply stand up and say, okay, congratulations on Rosso uh, At least now we know fuel will be 12 kwacha. Mm -hmm. uh, the formula that President Akainde Ichilema went around preaching will now kick in. Now the dollar will drop to 10. Uh, President Akainde Ichilema's wishes will now be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. That's all I'll do because you want to politic, I'm going to politic. But don't you think that the, the Honorable Minister has done a good job in explaining what debt restructuring is and its its impact on, on, on Zambia's economy the other day when he featured on Hot FM? I read something yesterday and I mm -hmm. think that uh, he had followed that guidance that, mm -hmm. that, that I gave him. And uh, for that, uh, he, with him, I think he's, um, he, he's being cautious. Mm -hmm. Uh, the president was not being very careful. Uh, he wants to politic. Um, there's been a number of celebrations, Lufia. When the EPND came into power, and they uh, were being asked uh, in about uh, how they were going to run things, they, on the floor of the House, they said, wait for our budget. Mm -hmm. In 2021, we're implementing our budget. Uh, in 2022, they started saying, no, no, wait, because now it was their budget. They said, wait, wait for the IMF. Mm -hmm. When the IMF came, they said, wait for debt restructuring. So we are now there uh, where they're saying they've, they've, they've restructured debt. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with uh, colleagues uh, in government that um, uh, um, celebrate victories too early. Okay, They're in a hurry to, mm -hmm. to, to celebrate, to try and appease the Zambian people. On one hand, uh, President Daka Indi will go and say, we are doing very well. We've done so well and so on. And then when you, when you go to the detail, you discover that um, all they have done is export all the maize that the PF left. And they're saying they've done well. All they are doing is exporting power at the expense of uh, citizens. And yet they're saying they're doing well. So when you see the UPND celebrate something, Chilufia, I must warn you, be very careful. Mm -hmm. and you'll be very disappointed. You saw the celebrations around CDF. There's now, there was a bill uh, the past two days on the floor of the House. If you go back to the debates, our debates in 2021 on the CDF, what we told them then is what they're realizing now. And yet the president has been saying you never come up with alternative policy. So uh, in line with uh, uh, the governance style, uh, we have um, uh, inexperienced uh, leaders in government today. Uh, inexperienced leaders uh, who are not ready to learn. Uh, they want to pretend they know it all. Even when the results are showing the exact opposite. Look at the current uh, economic situation. Mm. Look at the cost of living. And the only thing they'll tell you uh, to answer that is that PF left debt. Yes, we left debt. But we'll show you how that debt worked. What they haven't told you is how they've been spending how they're implementing their budgets. When PF was leaving power, the highest budget we ever uh, made, did was 120 billion. Mm -hmm. That was the highest. The other budget, I think, was 87. The other one was 97. 120 was highest. And yet, within that budget, you've got three international airports. Within that budget, you've got Kazungula Bridge. Mm -hmm. Within that budget, you've got all these bridges in Lusaka. You have over 2,000 communication towers. You have over 1,000 schools. You have close to 800 health facilities within that budget. Their first budget was 170 billion kwacha. I want you to, to pay attention to that. Truth. Their first budget was 170 billion kwacha. 50 billion kwacha over and above the highest budget PF ever did. What have you seen from 170 billion kwacha? The second budget was around that same figure. What have we seen? So you have a budget which is 50 billion over and above the biggest uh, budget uh, PF ever had. 
and all you hear is CDF. Now CDF, uh, 30 million times 100 and, uh, uh, 156 constituencies would be about 4.5 billion. Mm -hmm. together. But against 170 billion, you have 4.5 billion. So the only story that you are being told is a story within the 4.5 billion, which is 2.3% of the budget. So when you, they relate it to date so that the citizens who are not well informed think that the UPND government is busy paying back debt. That's why the economy is not doing well. The UPND government has not paid back any debt from 2020. Mm -hmm. From 2020, government has not been repaying debt. So meaning that the past three years that I've been in government, if the economy was to improve, whilst we're busy negotiating debt restructuring, the, the economy would have shown very good signs of performing. So where we are now, we try to run away from what really can make the economy tick and uh, subject our citizens to celebrating small victories. The real victory for this country, Chief, right. is when we put a government in place that will be bold enough, like uh, we had started seeing, bold enough to change policies in the mining sector so that we begin to get revenue from the mines. Right. Honorable, due to time, I'll ask you to give us uh, your closing remarks. Well, my, my, my closing remarks are that um, um, we want Zambians to um, be very careful with what our leaders uh, in government today say. Mm -hmm. uh, what remains a fact is that our leaders are not in the habit of telling the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why, uh, uh, and because they've continued uh, telling lies, they are getting even some of our members of parliament in trouble. A young Jean Chisenga, uh, because of her background, is such that she can't stand people who tell lies. If you tell a lie, she will call you out. Because when you have told a lie, you have told a lie. Therefore, you are a liar. Mm. You know, I, I, I can't describe you as a pastor or a reverend. I'll just say, Chirufi It is a fact. You know, the, the defense uh, for defamation is justification. And in that particular case, as we saw in Parliament, the president confronted... Uh, Confronted Jean. Fish na vapor. We should never let the drought. Says, no, I can take Forget about the drought. What about the milli meal? What about the fuel? What about the fertilizer? I can take a dollar. She challenged him head on. What would have expected if Parliament was decent was to leave it at that because the President uh, accosted the, the Honorable Member and the Honorable Member challenged the President. Mm -hmm. The President simply said, well, and he walked away. So, my point is, our leaders should stop lying. Mm -hmm. I don't want another Jin Chisenga in parliament, Munia Azul when the president comes, or Mulenga Fube, calling the president a liar, uh, and then he's also punished. So, I hope between now and September, uh, the leaders uh, you know, don't undertake to, to, to give false statements uh, and as such tell lies. Because my members won't keep quiet. Right. My members will call them out for who they are. They will say, Mulibabufi, if what they say is not true. Yeah. It's unfortunate we've run out of time. We would have wanted to talk about uh, the deal uh, on Mopani, you know, where our selfish leaders have right. actually sold actually, the mind um, to themselves. I'm just uh, b being told that we have a f at least a few minutes. Maybe you can touch on the, the, the Mopani deal, of course, which we, we, we hear that wasn't, didn't go through Parliament. Yes. Um, you see, the, 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 it's a source of concern, actually. Mm -hmm. It started with uh, the transfer of shares uh, from ZCCMIH to uh, is it First Quantum, 20%. Because uh, Article 210 is very clear. Uh, any disposal or transfer uh, of uh, public assets or property is, sh 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 is subject to parliament approval. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been building on it. 20% didn't come to parliament. The dual carriageway didn't come to parliament. And now Mopani. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it is because there is no transparency and accountability in the UPND government. If there was a transparency and accountability, even the deal on Mopani would have come to parliament. Mm -hmm. Because if that had come to parliament, the first question would have asked, 
there was a tender for Mopani. And there were four bidders. None of these bidders, uh, the one who's been selected was not among the four bidders that uh, were interested in the mine. We would have had occasion to interrogate why this newly formed company, mm -hmm. which was formed around the same time the, the, the tenders were out, is now the one that has, has been selected as a, the best selected uh, bidder. Mm. Would have wanted to know more about uh, the background of this company, uh, whose uh, address is uh, just a, 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 a cell number. You know, we would have known why there are so many things that are not clear about this company. Mm -hmm. Would have also wanted to know why President Daka Indichlema's uh, best friend is on the board of that uh, uh, new company. Would have had occasion to ask these difficult questions. Mm -hmm. Now, it is very clear when you read between the lines that. Um, there's a lot of secrecy. Uh, this transaction was not transparent. You know by now that when you see the UPND government embark on a, a, a program, mm -hmm. uh, you should know that there's some personal interest from their leaders. You question the deal carriage way. We ask questions to say, if the money is coming from NAPSA and Rickman's compensation, this is Zambian money. Mm -hmm. The contractors execute their, their, their job and they're paid 650 uh, million dollars. What's the further interest in the, in the road? The money was borrowed. Why is in this road now being, why, why can't NAPSA and Workman Compensation take over the road on behalf of the Zambian people? Why is this consortium, what, I mean, what kind of deal is that? The money is coming from Zambia. <laughs> you, you get my point? Mm -hmm. I come into your house, okay? I come into your house and I'm getting money from your son. I borrow money from your son to build you a house. Why don't you just get money from your son yourself and build a house? Mm -hmm. So it's because of these difficult questions that um, uh, the, 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 these transactions are not coming to, to Parliament. But want to assure the Zambian people that um, all these things will be reversed the moment governments change. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also a, a caution to the investors that um, uh, we, want, we, we want investors to come and invest in our country. But let them familiarize themselves with the the, the, the laws obtaining in our land, mm -hmm. especially the constitution. Uh, the, the investors, we welcome you, we want you to come and invest, but uh, just be careful that you are doing that within the law. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough to excite the people in the Copper Belt that you find, find, found an investor when uh, uh, the laws are not being followed. There is no excuse for not following the law. Even on morality, there are many things that have come on the floor of the house for the sake of information. So the Zambian people are informed. Their representatives ask questions on clarification. Now, these big transactions are being done outside uh, uh, Parliament completely, and for obvious reasons. So whilst uh, you know, uh, the courts are filled with people uh, who, are, who have been arraigned because they built a house, brick and mortar, they're being questioned where they got the money from. We have our leaders looting our minds in broad daylight with their friends as Zambians sit back and watch. Right. The real criminals are out there, not those ones that you're seeing at the magistrate complex. Honorable Mundavile, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Shilifa. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.